a lot of people suffer and struggle with feeling worthy of happiness, of learning how to believe they're a good person, of believing they're enough. Mm -hmm. Why do you think we struggle so much with being happy and how can we learn to love ourselves deeper so that we are happier? I love that question. So I think there's two different kinds of levels of happiness. So for example, I could be in a low mood today, but still be so fulfilled and almost loving watching that process of waking up just being more like meh today. But that meh state can mean like, still fine yeah. you know what i mean so there's two there's almost like one that's like the bottom of the ocean that's like your core fulfillment joy to be alive like grateful like oh my god this is like this is an adventure you know what i mean like let me just observe what's going on today and it's all interesting and all beautiful and so amazing yeah. right that level of happiness i think really comes from being who you're supposed to be you know and being happy with who you are and almost feeling like you're doing what brings you the self-esteem, the fulfillment, the giving and receiving in the way that you're supposed to, right? I think when you give to the world in a way that you feel like there is an abundance more coming from it, it changes your whole worldview because you're like, there's so much more where that came from. I'm so happy to serve. I love giving to people. I love seeing how I get received when I give to people. It kind of is like the genie wishing for one wish and then you get tons more back, wow. right? When you're tapped into like, this is, I'm in my magic. So then I don't just know that I'm special from here but I feel that I'm special every single day because I know that I have something I've cultivated and given energy to that I really feel like is me. It's like my home frequency. I can come back to my base of what my value add is in this world, right? So I think that's number one is like, there's so much deeper levels of happiness that, that are available to you if you can break away from constantly telling yourself you have to be like everybody else, right. constantly trying to get the love and belonging, the kind of short-term cookies, you can kind of forego them and put the, put the sort of uh -huh. time in to take the risk to get it from the sort of longer term value, yeah. giving people value rather than what can I get out of life so quickly. And those cookies are so good. <laughs> those cookies are so good in a moment. Just, oh man, I love those cookies. But there's, right? so much, there's so much greater benefit when you can delay or at least not every day have to go for the cookies. I'm not saying yeah. never enjoy it, but... Um, you know, as a metaphor, just not going for the pleasure every single day. Yeah. Really going for a state of long-term happiness mm. and fulfillment. Yeah. Um, Comes down to making yourself proud of who you are, Absolutely, I think. yeah. And that feeling is not replaceable by any other thing, I don't think. That's true. I think when you're like, I really am happy, almost like you're in a parent being like, you know what, that was a hard decision, but really, I'm impressed with you. I think that is the ultimate, if you want to be happy, you make yourself proud of you. 100%. When was the time in the last decade you were the least proud of you and at your lowest energy state? I think the end of that really, my, the ending of that relationship was very difficult for me because another thing that I was really conditioned with, my mom is Indian and um, my parents have been married forever. And mm. one of the things I really was conditioned with is that it's, if a relationship goes well, you've done well. Like it's your job as a woman to make a good relationship. And so you fail, you're the failure, if you don't make it work. Wow. That was a big one for me. So that was a really, really hard time of being like, am I, am I defected as a woman? Am I not desirable enough? Did I not do enough? Was I not more malleable? Should I have, you know, been more flexible or rolled down more, you know, whatever, all those different stories that you can create. I think that was a really big one for me. Um, but I don't think I would have undone that conditioning if I hadn't gone through that experience. Wow. You so know? you felt like you were a failure with the relationship ending. Yeah. I felt like it was on me. I think a lot of women go through that too. Really? I think they feel responsible for making a relationship go well. Where do you, I mean, there's something to be said for, you know, people who are in relationships, relationships for decades mm -hmm. that are like, listen, we had some hard seasons, some mm -hmm. hard years. Mm -hmm. And we could have easily just said, you know what, this isn't working or some bad stuff happened and mm -hmm. we, we should have left. Mm -hmm. But we decided to stay together. Mm -hmm. And we're so grateful 10, 20, 30 years later that we did mm -hmm. because every relationship has some seasons. Yeah. Um, but then there's also, like I see that point of view, but then I'm also like, okay, if your body is rejecting something mm -hmm. and it's telling you this is not working mm -hmm. and I'm giving it my all and I'm trying and we're going to therapy and you're really trying to commit to make it work, but it's, mm -hmm. you're rejecting it and it's just a disconnect. Mm -hmm. I also see the benefit and the value and 
cautiously uncouple it yeah. and saying, listen, we got to go. This isn't working. Yeah. Let's take some time and maybe we come back together in the future. Yeah. And I don't think there's a right or wrong either way. 100%. I don't think it's like you're a failure if you didn't go through all the hard uh-huh. times and go for 30, 40 years and make it out beautiful holding hands as like 90 year olds on the other side. Because you could also be together for a long time and be miserable. hundred percent. You know, it's like, and there's a lot of probably Indian families that just stay together, mm-hmm. even though they don't fully love and have a fullness of life. Yes. Right? I'm sure you see both. Completely. And that's the thing. And I love that you touched on this because that's the thing about human design is that we're always trying to look for, always tough it out or leave the second you're ready. But actually everyone's on a different path. Yeah. So that advice isn't going to work for everybody. And, you know, you're kind of I guess well predisposed to seeing this because you're very open in your chart I had a look at you're very open in your mind so it is always about kind of not having your fixed opinions on things it's always about saying yeah I could see that maybe sure I don't know could be wrong could be right let's see right and that's one of your gifts and I think that's one of the things is that we're always trying to find the right way to do life and then wronging everybody else who's not Mm. fitting into that directive and say instead of saying we are all on radically different journeys journeys no one else can even ever even come close to understanding so us using our again using our mental energy on trying to find some kind of system that makes us all be on the same thing or same level of understanding or same goal or it's just a moot exercise you know and i think that the challenge that or the opportunity we all get to face is are we going to live our life trying to please everyone else based on our decisions or lack of decisions or feeling guilty and bad and wrong for decisions we make that others don't approve of. Yeah. Because it's really hard to make decisions if we're thinking, well, I don't want people to be upset at me. Yeah. And I did that for a long time. I stayed in relationships too long that I shouldn't have. I got out of stuff that I probably shouldn't have because mm-hmm. I was worried about the opinions of others. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So you felt like you were in a low part at the end of that relationship because you felt like a failure. I felt like I wasn't being my best self. Really? Yeah, I felt like it wasn't bringing out the best of me and therefore I shamed myself for that because it's not good to feel like you're not happy with how you're being, right? Yeah. And, um, and also, yeah, I really had to contend with, like, if I end this, then am I stupid? Am I making a really bad decision? Because, again, like you were saying, he's great on paper. We're good enough together. My whole family loves him. He's successful. He's this, he's, he's that. He's nice to me. He's the yeah. whatever it is, yeah. All that stuff, you know? Um, well, what, what was and telling you like this isn't in alignment or this isn't the right thing for me right now. What was telling you, was it your intuition? Was it your gut? Was it just like you didn't feel like you were in your purpose or your joy? How were you able to know that, okay, I've given this enough time mm-hmm. and the season is ready to move on to the next thing? Yeah, I think I can come up with a lot of logical reasons for you, <laughs> but I think, I think ultimately, if I watch myself in net net, my emotional state was more negative than positive. In the relationship. Towards the end. Uh, so then that kind of tells you, well, you, again, it's like the body knows, right? Like it just, it's so tangible. We just need to watch ourselves as if from above and say, does this person look like a, a thriving, does it look like it's suiting you or not? And you don't need to be able to explain it away. You being a generator doesn't mean that you're similar to other people who are generators. Really? Yes. Why not? Because you're not similar personality-wise to them. You just use your energy. Your mechanism is the same, right? So imagine there's 8 billion people on the planet. There's not five different personalities, right? Right, Like that's very limiting.